Did you get it? Did you get it? Oh, oh. God, I'm sorry. You can get out. I don't mean to sound rude. I just, I- oh. I might cut that out. I just need to shut up. That could be at the beginning. That'll be good. I'm sweating a little bit, sorry. Hello everybody, welcome back to Chef and with Chefry. Today what we are going to do in your Goma hands is we're going to make a vegetarian chicken and alfredo. We've got meatless chicken patties, and then we're just gonna make a bechamel sauce and add a bunch of cheese to it to make it a good alfredo sauce. But hey, 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 you meat eaters, don't click out of this video. You can happily add chicken to this. In order to do that, what I would do, you can do multiple things. You can get a rotisserie chicken from the store and just pull it. You can get chicken, you can cook it in a nice cast iron pan. You can make it blackened. You can do just regular, whatever seasoning you want. It's good with pretty much anything. So yeah, there's that. So now if we wanna come over here, and come look at the ingredients. Come on! So what we're gonna be working with today for the base of the sauce, heavy whipping cream, make it nice and thick. I don't think I'm gonna need all of them. I've got uh, Italian blend cheese. I got really good Parmesan cheese here, some garlic and onion, some lemons, some dry herbs and spices, just to help bolster it a little bit. And then I got these noodles. I bought these right when we found out about the pandemic. It was getting ready to happen and everybody bought all the cheap pasta. It's like a five dollar box of pasta. I don't recommend it, or I do, I guess, but if that's what you can get, get it. If not, just go with the regular pasta, like a fettuccine or a linguine, and that would be good. And another thing, if you see me writing down on a piece of paper in the middle of me recording, I'm writing a recipe down so I can put it in the description for you this time. So you don't have to, well, you still have to watch the video, of course, for the method of preparation, but I am gonna write the recipe down and put it in the description. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna preheat the oven for the chicken. It says to preheat it at 425, so I'm going to turn it up to 425, let it do its thing, then I'm going to turn on the pot of water. I did the right burner this time, that's a plus. And then you want to make it salty when you're cooking pasta. Salty like the sea is how I was taught. So a lot of salt. Flavor all of your layers, so if your pasta is flavored, if your pasta's flavored, then your pasta's gonna taste good and it's not gonna taste bland. So that's on the oven's preheating. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt a stick of butter in a pot, and get that going. I'm gonna cook some onions in it from the garlic. And I'm gonna make a roux out of that to make my bechamel sauce. So let me grab this onion real quick. So with this, I'm just gonna do a dice. Or do, yeah, I'm gonna do a dice today. Come on, we need to readjust. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into a, a dice today. That way you don't have big pieces of the Alfredo sauce. Some people typically probably don't do this, but this just adds another good layer of flavor. And who doesn't love cooked onions? Onions are just good all around. I put them on anything. I'm about to grab a little bowl. Let me grab a little bowl. Here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna dice this onion up. Like this. Now I'm gonna twist this half. See, it's still doing it. Sometimes onions have thinner layers and you just like to fold up and make a mess. But it's okay, it's not the end of the world. Looks homemade that way, more rustic. One time I made this, but I used a rotisserie chicken and I made it lasagna style. I made the Alfredo. I made it like a typical lasagna, but I used Alfredo sauce instead and it turned out great. So if you wanna try that out too, that would be cool. Now I'm gonna grab my garlic. Get it like you mean it. Mother's Day is coming up, so this would be good for Mother's Day. Who doesn't love Alfredo? I wanted to, I planned on making an eggplant parmesan tonight, but went to our local food lion and they had no eggplant. It was a little depressing and I got a little upset. You can ask Jennifer. He got flustered. I got flustered because I had a plan in mind and then it didn't work, but I shouldn't have gotten that flustered. Yeah, we were walking in the produce aisle and I was like, I can't think of anything. And then I was like, I'm just gonna think about it. I'm gonna walk through the store. And then I saw a jar of Alfredo sauce and I was like, And then we remembered. It. We remembered that we have the corn chicken in the freezer, so we were like, why not use what we have? Things happen for a reason. This is gonna be delicious too, but it's not gonna be as healthy as the eggplant parmesan because I wasn't gonna fry it. That'll be a later video. My water's starting to simmer. I'm melting my butter real good here. So I'm gonna let it keep rolling. I'm gonna turn it up some. Mm -hmm. 
So we had a rambe on our last calendar, but March, I mean April's over. Now it's Mufasa. 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 So now my butter's starting to make some noises, which means good things are happening. So I'm gonna take my onions, I'm gonna dump them in. Use my trusty, dusty wooden spoon. Turn it up some more. Whatever, it smells good. Turn it up a little bit more. Oven's still preheating, the water's almost ready. I'm gonna hold off on putting the noodles in the water. I'm gonna turn it down, but at least it'll be close to being ready for when I need it. So the point of all of this butter is gonna be to make a roux, and of course the onions are gonna absorb some. So you need a little bit of extra in there, but you can see all the extra butter in there. Once I pour my flour in there and make the roux, it's gonna help thicken up my bechamel sauce, which is the base for every good alfredo sauce in my book. It's gonna be a quick, easy meal that seems complicated, but it's really not. I'll show you the complicated part of it is when you're whisking in the heavy cream and stuff and you don't wanna add too much or too little. You wanna be slow with it so it doesn't um, congeal up or nobody likes globby sauces or globby gravies. So you're essentially making a gravy at first and then adding cheese to it to make it a good, a good, good sauce. Now what I'm gonna do is since you see some color on the onions, I'm gonna add some garlic to it, liven it up some more, mix that in. Mm, smells yummy. I'm gonna need a whisk for this part here in a minute. Just let the garlic cook a little bit more. Wish you could smell this. Oh, you might, you could if you made it. Measure out my flour so it's easier for everybody. I'm gonna start off with Half a cup. Now with making a roux, you want to make it like wet sand is what it's supposed to look like. So I'm going to add in half a cup. Whisk it, see what it looks like. I think that might actually be spot on there. You can see how it's coming together and binding up a little bit. And add just a little bit more. And do a tablespoon. Just for a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to have to cook just a smidge, but you want to keep it moving so it doesn't burn. We're not making a a jumbo or a gumbo here, so we don't need it to cook too much. But you cook, let it cook a little bit. It's gonna bring out some good nutty flavors in the in the roux. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my pints of heavy cream, heavy whipping cream, and you're gonna slowly add it in here. Don't add too much. Don't want clumpiness. But you'll see it start to bind up and bring it all together. There, look super thick. Don't freak out. You can really see it. Thickening up, this is gonna be a lot of sauce. So there's one pint. Just be careful you don't get it all over the place. You can see there that it's almost a gravy texture. A little more heavy cream. This was originally supposed to be a healthy meal, but it's nowhere near healthy anymore. But it's gonna be yummy. So there's about a cup, about half of the pint. You can make it a little looser at first because you're gonna be adding cheese into it, which will help thicken it up later on. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this in slowly. You can see that's getting a really good consistency there. I can still feel flour in there though. So you really want to make sure that you're mixing it really well. There's also a whole bunch of onions in here, so it's kind of hard to tell. So there's another pint, so that's two pints so far, which is four cups, which is a quart. See, that's kind of slightly loose, which is where we want to be right now. I'm kind of sad a little bit, because this is the first meal I've made for you guys without having using cast iron, but that's okay. Taking out some sheet pans, put on some oil. Then I'm gonna take my chickenless patties, put them on a pan. In my opinion, these ones taste better than the vegan ones because they just taste more like chicken. However, the vegan ones are also really good, just in a different kind of way. <laughs> so now all of that's prepped and ready to go. Eventually, I'm gonna pour some, put some cheese all on the top of these. It'll be really good. And keep an eye on your sauce. Because once it heats up, it's gonna thicken up. But if it gets too hot, it's gonna break. And then it gets watery with nasty clumps in it. And it's just gross. What I'm gonna end up doing with this is I'm gonna make a nice dipping sauce or a olive oil with butter on it. We can put it all over the top and it's gonna give good flavor to those biscuits. They're rolls. They're not biscuits, they're rolls. I wanna call everything a biscuit for some reason. As you can see the sauce here, how it's got that really good consistency. Keep an eye on it, you want it to cook a little bit to cook out that flour flavor. This is a good bechamel sauce right here. You want a beer? I have one. Oh, you have one? Yeah, get you to it, buddy. Found this beer at work the other day. It's a, it's a Vienna lager, which if you noticed, my hat usually has the Devil's Backbone Vienna lager on it. 
or just Devil's Backbone Brewing, and then my favorite beer is the Vienna Lager. So when I saw the Vienna Lager, I got excited, and then of course it's a dog riding a bike. This is Crank Arm Brewing, and it's got 5.3 ABV and 21 IBU. For all y'all that know what that means. I know what you know what alcohol content means, but IBU is bitterness, so. It's good, it's refreshing. Keep an eye on your sauce. I'm gonna throw these in the oven. Done. I'm gonna start adding some cheese into here. So this whole bag is eight ounces, or it, it's two cups. Eight ounce by weight, two cups by measurement. I'm gonna start with half of the bag. And whisk it in. Don't want it to boil too much, because once it gets to that point, and we see how it's thickened up so much. I got some whole milk, which is thinner than heavy cream. I can add some of that in to, oops, to cut it some. That was probably half a cup or so. Good base for mac and cheese. It's okay, don't freak out, we can fix this. There we go, see it now? The cheese is melting still, but Oh man, that's beautiful though. Still too much cheese. Coat the noodles nicely. Won't be too loose and falling off the noodles. It's gonna be like Alfredo mac and cheese. <laughs> and then I'm still gonna add a little bit of Parmesan for the saltiness. That was probably a quarter cup. We're boiling. Do we want some noodles? Yeah, let's throw in some noodles. Oh, fancy. Just put them on. Keep an eye on your Alfredo sauce the whole time. Hopefully this turns out the way I want it to. So now I'm gonna add in some oregano. There's one, two teaspoons of that, two teaspoons of parsley, add in some garlic powder, two, just do everything in twos. And then onion powder, whisk that in. It's loosening up nicely now. I just turned the heat back up. The, adding the cold milk into it seized up the cheese a little bit. So it just clumped together. But now that it's getting hot again, it's breaking the cheese up again. They're melting it better. It looks a lot better now. I'm just freaking out there for a second, guys. That looks like it's gonna taste really good. And check your noodles. I used to call them noodles, or somebody used to call them noodles in my family. You. It was me. Yeah. Looking good, looking good. I almost hit Georgie with the cheese whisk. I'm gonna add a little pepper to it. A little salt. A few grinds. I'm gonna julienne it. So when you julienne things, what you're gonna to wanna to do is find the biggest leaf and then put all the smaller leaves into it. And then you're gonna take it, roll it up, and then you're gonna to wanna to just go just like this with a good rocking motion. And you can see how it's going into strands. Just looks fancy. Just keep your fingers out of the way of the blade because that would've hurt real bad. Check your sauce again, looking Gucci. Take a couple tablespoons of butter. The rest of our EVOO here. One, two, three. Two to three tablespoons. Then I'm gonna add in some garlic powder. One, two, three teaspoons. With a little bit of onion, about a teaspoon. And the dry, I'm just gonna put in Italian seasoning in this one. That's one, two, three. A little salt, a little pepper. And I'm gonna throw it in the microwave to melt the butter down. Check the noodles. Nice and hot. Mmm! Oh, I'm ready. I'm gonna throw these in. Can you get the butter going. Means it's ready. Okay, now I'm gonna let those cook partially. And then I'm gonna add this to the top of them when they're almost done. Just to give them some pizzazz, make them different. And you'll like that. Keep stirring. Am I talking too much in your video, Jeffrey? Maybe. Make me drink. I'm gonna give the sauce a try. <laughs> See, yeah, that's good. Let me just tell you there. I love it. You tell me I make weird noises when I enjoy food too much. Yeah, you do. I just love food. I might add a little bit more pepper to it. We love pepper. You don't have to add that much if you don't want to. Add a little bit more salt. Oh, that's such a good flavor. It's like the flavor's growing. You can really taste the onions in it and the herbs. And these are done now. Dump it in. 
there's a dense key. I'm gonna go to al dente on them. How long do these chicken patties usually take? I've never cooked them before. Oh, they're done. They're, they're done. perfect, yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna take these out. They're cold in the middle still. I just flipped them over though. Yeah. The key with vegetarian chicken or anything patties, you just wanna poke the middle, make sure it's nice and hot. I think I can add a little bit more cheese to that. I'm gonna add a little bit more Parmesan. Oh, Romano, Pecorino Romano, excuse me. Now that I actually see what the sauce is supposed to look like, I'm confident in adding a little bit more cheese to it. There we go. It's got a good consistency. Oops. It's got a good consistency to it. All right, I'm gonna write some recipes down. One box. Um, here it's one onion. I got four cloves of garlic, one stick of butter. That's for the Alfredo sauce, so you can make your roux. I have four cups of heavy cream, three tablespoons of EVOO, five or six grains of salt, depending on how much you like, two teaspoons of dry oregano, 10 leaves of fresh basil. I wrote this down as I was doing it. I apologize, it makes no sense. Half a cup and one tablespoon of AP flour, a whole box of noodles, two teaspoons, two teaspoons of garlic powder and onion powder. What does that say? <sighs> one, I did about a cup, cup and a half of the Italian blend cheese, two teaspoons dry parsley, two teaspoons Italian seasoning, and then of course one per person of the meatless chicken patties. Did you take a screenshot, guys? So I'm gonna take out my rolls. We're starting to get some crust on them. So now I'm gonna take my butter, olive oil, herb mix, and then I'm gonna paint it on top so this flavor gets in there. <laughs> Everybody gets a turn. Everybody gets a turn. No one left behind. I like to really slather it on there. Let it run down the sides. Put it back in the oven. <clears throat> oh yeah. <laughs> Stick your finger in it and check it. So I'm gonna take this mozzarella cheese here. And I'm gonna add a couple slices on top of each of these. Oh yeah. That was good, right? I guess. You didn't have to lie like this that. This one's fighting me, so it's just gonna be like this. <laughs> it's going to be unrecognizable. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to tell. Now I'm gonna take a little of the pecorino romano. I'm going to do a little sprinkle, sprinkle. Right on top. Get that all on there. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of Italian seasoning on top as well. So those flavors go throughout. Take the towel, don't touch a hot pan. The other day at work, I was making some sandwiches and I grabbed a pan with a wet towel and dropped the bread all over the floor. Not it was splendid. Party. Let this cook, let that cheese melt. I'm probably gonna end up broiling him a little bit. But yeah, sauce is looking stupendous. Not that it's a stew. Make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. Nobody likes burnt stuff. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Mayan, oh Mayan. Almost ready to present, you guys. It's so close. I'm excited about this one. Wanna watch me drink some more beer? Let me make sure you see the dog. He really wants to show you. Let's see if I can do it. You ready? Oh. Like my shark socks? Who cares about a clean cooking surface? These are new socks, and I'm not using it anymore. Done. That hurt. I should have stretched first. I'm getting old, buddy. The rolls look delicious. Don't you think so? Yeah, it is nice and a little bit brown. Now, you can see the cheese is starting to melt really nice, but I'm gonna give it a quick little garlic broil. But like the shepherd's pie, I'm gonna keep my eye on it. I'm so funny. <laughs> Guys, he's adding more of the concoction to it. I did. So now I'm gonna check this again. Cheese is melting real good, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my pasta, put it onto the plate. I take it and I'm gonna spin it up some. Doesn't that look pretty yummy, huh? Take my beautiful Alfredo sauce, ladle that on here, or spoon it, because that's totally a spoon. I like it saucy. Check the chicken, looking good. Take a couple of rolls here, put them there. Ooh, those are hot. Take some basil or basil. Sprinkle that all on top. Do a little sprinkle sprinkle. What's oh, so sexy, buddy? I'm gonna take this beauty here. 
Ooh. Oh my, look at that cheesy goodness. Set that down there. Oh, oh God, so scary. So scary. I thought we were doing good. The test found that that was a lie. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little basil here, sprinkle it on top of that. I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese on top of that too. Cause who doesn't like cheese? There we go. Ooh. Look at that. We're gonna go ahead and get the presentation shot before I dig in. So let me clean it up a smidge. And here we go. Now that is carb heaven. I really hope you enjoyed this. Super simple. Super easy. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Use the hashtag Chef and with Chefry, please. And I'm gonna try it for you. Oh no, picture, buddy. Picture. Oh, picture, picture, picture. picture. I'm getting ahead of myself. Here we go, buddy. Ooh. Sorry, I made weird noises. Yeah, for real. Let me get that sauce on there. Mm. Mm. You're gonna wanna wipe off your beard. I know, buddy. So, really cheesy, really fatty. Let me do a little piece of this chicken too. Veggie chicken. Oh, okay. See, it still almost has a little bit of a texture chicken. Tastes yummy. So, thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is a super easy vegetarian chicken alfredo. Hope you enjoy making it at home. And uh, catch you on the flip side. Mmm. <laughs> Got one thing, I forgot to add the lemon to it. Oh my. Squeeze some lemon on top to help cut the fat.